sports analysts. I've been watching them just poo-poo on the Miami Heat the entire playoffs. How Milwaukee was such a better team and da-da-da-da-da. And Miami spanked them up in five games. Hey guys, JC Peretz here, founder of allstarcharts.com, and welcome back to Pardon the Price Action. I am joined, as always, by my man Steve Straza. Let's get right into it. Banks have quietly been marching higher over the past few weeks. Is the bottom finally in for the market's biggest laggards? I mean, it was just early May, about a month ago, where we were talking about who's next, you know, what, what bank is going to blow up next. Today, I'm seeing regional banks, community banks, having one of their best days really since and go all the way back to 2020 for community banks, Quaba. We're there. We're, we're pressing on multi-month highs. We used to look at QABA uh, for the past few months as a leading indicator of where KRE and KBE and the whole space was going because it really was leading to the downside. Now you're seeing it lead to the upside. It's ripping today. It was up 6.5%. A week ago, it was up another 6.5% uh, today. If this move is going to stick and we're going to settle here uh, at the close today, I think banks are back. This is a little short term tradable low. Uh, and let's see, you know, let's see what they got from here. You know, you know, Mr. Straza, this this really just comes back to small cap stocks. Right. You know, uh, the bets that we've been making in small caps have been like, man, we're going to if we're going to make money in small caps, the banks need to get a bid. Right. So we've had like this, like indirect long exposure to banks, whether we like it or not. Um, and, 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 and it's starting to work. And, you know, in hindsight, it was definitely more of a bet on bank stocks than I had really come to terms with. Do you feel me on that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely a bet on banks. You know, it was really just looking at the, uh, small cap ETF on its own, you know, IWM getting back to those former highs from 2018, 2020. But in hindsight, yeah, like I said, it was it, it was probably I probably didn't really come to, you know, which is an interesting human behavior dynamic that I kind of like avoided that part of the of the waiting and really um, understanding just how much exposure we were putting on into banks. But I mean, that's just the truth of the matter. So we're going to talk about this more during the two minute drill. But if you go to chart nine quick, right, small caps are in a very logical place to start outperforming large caps. But within small caps, the banks or the financials are at a very logical place to now start outperforming their small cap peers, right? So it makes sense for both of those ratios to start rising at the same time. This no question. Up. All right, let's talk about the new technology. I know you love this one. The Apple hype, big news, big, big news for Apple this week. They just had their most hotly anticipated product launch, probably in almost a decade. Are we buying the BR set? And more importantly, are we buying the stock here? I mean, I don't like buying the stock below its late 2021 highs, right? Those former P call it 180, you know, that's overhead supply. Here we are, right? Got a call from one of my high school buddies yesterday. Same guy calling me uh, about cryptocurrencies in December, 2017, right before they came tumbling down. So I think it's, you know, rather it's probably not a coincidence as we run into this resistance. So, you know, for me, I, I like Kimmy's short idea this morning, you know, a uh, resident day trader uh, looking to fade Apple for a short term trade intraday. I really like that for a day trader from a bigger, a longer term investor, which we obviously, you know, the majority of my portfolio is, you know, intermediate, in my opinion, you know, looking out months, weeks and months. I'd rather be long Apple if we're above 180, right? Above 180. You know, I, I like it, no question. And just keep in mind, you know, if Apple's doing well, what does that mean for the S&P 500? And if we're getting that rotation into small caps and things like Apple are stuck below overhead supply, it doesn't necessarily mean that these big growth stocks like Apple and other technology needs to collapse. It could just underperform for a while, be flat, down a little bit, up a little bit, but not these two, 3% days that you're getting in the Russell 2000 small caps. Yeah, so if you look at the next chart, this is what you're talking about, right? The potential for a failed breakout here. Uh, you'll see the relative trend confirm if that's where we're going. So this black line in the lower pane, that's Apple versus S&P 500. That'll roll over. But I think the, the biggest thing to keep in mind here is like other mega cap tech stocks that have really been working. If you look at like the NVIDIA chart, look at the way NVIDIA uh, has been correcting, right? I think you want to be careful betting on some sort of like rollover and big leg lower uh, from Apple here because the way these other growth stocks have corrected has been very, very constructive.
NVIDIA broke through that former high like it wasn't even there. Keep that in mind. Um, also, just because you're getting rotation, it's relative strength specific. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that these stocks need to fall on an absolute basis. It's more just underperforming their peers that are really playing catch up. Right. Um, OK, so their uh, international indexes, there aren't just bases breaking out here in the United States. It's a global phenomenon. Talk to me about the bases that are setting up or breaking out around the world. So it's not all U.S. In fact, it was a lot more things other than U.S. Uh, all year and even last year, right? Europe really kicked this thing off, um, developed markets outside of the U.S. So Acqui breaking out of a nice space. That's great to see, right? That's heavy U.S., heavy tech exposure. But look at something like Acquiex, right? That That is not that at all. We got 14% Japan, 9.5% UK. Yeah, there it is financials, industrials, not tech. This is not a growth index. And look at this base. It's about to go. It's right there. You have those key highs uh, on a year-to-date basis and from last year. Even emerging markets, granted, when you remove China from that equation, have a beautiful base that's looking you know, ready to go and look like these other ones that have already resolved higher. Basically, if you were to make a list of regions around the world and all these you know, major indexes and regional international indexes, they're all starting to break out of bases and tell us that the trend is now higher. Yeah, you're seeing you're you're seeing it a lot. We talk about it like in in growth, like like in uh, uh, software, internet. You know, some of these smaller cap growth stocks. That's where you're seeing it again and again and again. And they're resolving higher semiconductors, right? They're resolving higher these bases that started to get going in the first half of last year and have taken a year, year and a half to really progress. And you're seeing one after the other, look at, and and so you're seeing it in those areas and you're seeing it internationally as well is my point, right? So here you're looking at uh, Asia Pacific, look at Latin America, you know, Brazil looks very similar to that, you know, big, big bases. And if all these others are resolving higher, then what do you think? You think these are gonna resolve lower? I think when you see what the others that are behaving in similar manners, the way that they're going, the way that they're paving the way, is essentially for upside resolutions and you're seeing them one after the other so why would we bet that when we find other areas of the market that look just like that why would we bet that the opposite is going to happen right see it's no surprise it's no surprise for people to see bases in europe or the united states breaking out right but now we're throwing latin americans in the mix emerging markets um asia right the ipac that's australia japan these are not countries that were leaders earlier in this cycle uh now they're joining the party it's all good all right, let's talk about uh, Bitcoin because Bitcoin is absolutely ripping as we speak. The SEC just sued the two largest crypto brokers in the world, Coinbase and Binance. Is the U.S. government making crypto an uninvestable asset class? It sounds to me like they're certainly trying to do that. I, I just don't understand like what their beef is. Um, I, I think it's just slowing us down. I'm not an expert in any of this, but from what I've seen, from my perspective, they could have put out a lot more clarity um you know in in the whole situation and and they've really given anybody looking to try and 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 work in this field and technology they're really giving them a hard time i just don't understand why if they would just provide more clarity and let these companies do what they do within whatever rules they want to set just set some rules right and let them do their thing you know i think uh, from what i can tell you know, it really puts the United States at a huge disadvantage to other places around the world. And wh wh as Americans, why would we want that? Like as investors, like we think like, oh, who cares? I'll just buy Brazilian stocks or who cares? I'll buy Australian stocks or Chinese stocks. I don't care where they're from. But I, at the end of the day, I live in America now taking our portfolios aside and just talking about like where we live. Like, why would we want to export uh, such important technology? Couldn't agree more. It's anti-American, anti-capitalist. Uh Kind of sad. What I will say is Bitcoin, like you said, ripping back today, despite all this negative news, right? So Bitcoin selling off in sympathy today on the heels of Binance and Coinbase. But you're getting a huge bounce back right now, right? And it's undoing this little top that it had here, which, by the way, Ethereum never top. Here's the problem. For Coinbase and Binance, I think the U.S. government is going to make it very, very difficult for them to operate in this space. What the government can't do is shut down Bitcoin, right? And they know that. They could shut down all the major players. They could shut down the banks who provide on-ramps and off-ramps for cryptos. They could shut down the brokers who let you transact in crypto. They can't shut down Bitcoin. I think you're seeing that price action unwind right here real time. Yeah, it's really interesting. And the relative strength you pointed out in Ethereum, also worth uh, noting, most definitely. Bitcoin made new lows. 
uh, before reversing. Ethereum did not. Um, you know, it, Ethereum and relative strength are just not something that you've seen in the same sentence uh, for some time. Uh, and when uh, I catch myself saying things that I haven't said in a long time, I, you know what I said earlier today? I said relative strength and general electric in the same sentence, uh, which also I'm not used to saying. <laughs> what a base. All right. What a base. All right. So small caps are waking up and we're finding more bullish chart setups on our minor leaguers scan than we have in years. What's your favorite? I, I got to go right to this Vachet Tech, Vachet Inter Technology. Have you ever heard of this one? VSH? Um, I have not. Mid cap, semiconductor name. These are the kinds of bases that we just love over here, right? So we zoomed way out on this thing, going all the way back to the dot com bubble. We've already retraced now 38% of that massive drawdown that began in the dot com and ended at the end of the financial crisis. It's go time, right? We're, we're climbing up the right hand side of this base now. Uh, as long as we're above, call it 25 and change. I like this one a lot. You get the more tactical setup and can see that relative strength on a shorter term basis in the chart above. So that's it. You want to call 25, 26. The bias is now higher. This is a monster base and I like it a lot. Well, with small caps, you know, for me, this form of resistance, right, turning into support, this is classic. That's why we've been long the IWM, which is fantastic. And people are like, oh, only five stocks are going up. Well, here's a list of all small cap stocks that are all making new 52 week highs. So if you think only five stocks are going up, then you don't know how to count, obviously. Um, and if we're betting on this rotation into small caps, which we have been, and in my opinion, we're, we're starting to see that. Like these are the early innings of that rotation, in my opinion, certainly how we're positioned. Um, I, I think, doesn't it make sense to look at the small caps that are already doing well, that are already outperforming? Vache obviously being one of them. Uh, look at Upound Group kind of putting in this nice little base. Uh, look at Federal Signal FSS. There's a pollution and treatment control stock. Would that make that an industrial? That's an industrial, right? Uh, and what a strong group, like waste management in general. Uh, these stocks have been great. Yeah. yeah, this is industrial. Another classic example of when they don't know what to do with a company, just stick them in industrials, right? It's so true. Yes. <laughs> all right. Word association. What do you got today? So this is a game that we like to play. I'll throw out a word or a phrase. You'll tell me the first thing that comes to mind. SEC. I think that I should probably keep my mouth shut. You know, um, listen, at the end of the day, we all have our feelings. It, 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 it's probably a tough job that they're doing. They're probably, un, you know, undermanned and under experienced. Right. I don't think they pay them very well. So if you're an expert in this sort of thing, you're probably off building something or, you know, betting on on the right things. If you are, are the expert that you are. I mean, I think that's part of it. Um, so unmanned and, you know, unexperienced, you know, for those reasons. Um, so I don't know if they're doing the best they can or not, but it seems to me like they're just, you know, not providing enough, uh, in, in enough clarity on what companies should and shouldn't be doing. So, you know, word association, what comes to mind? Disappointment. You know, part of what has made America like the global powerhouse it is, is the fact that our capital market system has trust and integrity and it just operates a far more sound way than any other country. Right. And SEC has done a great job with that uh, for almost a century now. And to me, uh, this all just smells really bad. It stinks. You're coming after a company, telling them that they're an unregistered broker. Listen, they've been doing it since 2019. They came public in 2021. They filed all these going public documents. The SEC reviewed it and said, that's fine. Now they're coming back. It's like a little bait and switch. Oh, you're an unregistered broker? Tell them that when they're going public. Uh, I just, I think the whole thing smells really bad and it's it's kind of pathetic. Yeah. All right, two-minute drill. Small caps, they're finally getting their bid. Talk to me. Is this it? Are we going to make a ton of money on these longs? You know, we've been saying for a long time, uh, months now, right, that if small caps keep holding, it's only a matter of time before they got to catch some rotation, right? And they were holding, 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 holding. And Friday, I think, was a major development. The biggest, uh, the biggest single-day performance uh, since November of last year. Now we're following that up today with another one of the best days it would be the second best day since november uh giving some follow through you see that candle from monday the black candle all the way to the right you got a little like retest of this tactical base uh and now we're going so we had the momentum surge friday now you're getting the follow through today i think what it's telling us is we want to be looking at small caps more and more and more uh for opportunities on the long side in the coming weeks and months you know from a relative strength standpoint i mean geez louise could you find a better 
place for small caps to start a regime of outperformance than literally to the penny where they started to outperform after COVID in 2020. I mean, to the penny. Um, I mean, you, you, you can't draw it up any cleaner. Doesn't mean the market needs to care what JC thinks. It's just, hello, like uh, we're, uh, it's right in front of us. It, I mean, it's either going to happen or it's not. And this is where it would happen. And here we are starting to get some rotation. So the question is not so much, you know, are we surprised by small caps at least acknowledging these levels? The question is, are they temporarily acknowledging these levels on their way down to new lows? Or is this it and this has legs? My suspicion is this is it and it has legs. And that's the bet that we're making. Um, but we're going to know soon either way, right? And and today's follow through after Friday's move, you know, is very, very impressive. And we can, we can cut this uh, ratio analysis so many different ways, right? Like if you just flip down a chart or two. We have IWM, mega caps, same level. But then we can like kind of look at the components, which this is industrials versus technology. If this ratio is moving higher, it's probably happening in an environment where small caps are outperforming. Why? And I understand that we're only looking at large cap uh, sectors in this ratio. But if industrials on a large cap base are working and outperforming, then industrials on a small cap basis are likely to too. And if that's the case, then small caps are probably outperforming large caps more broadly. And we're seeing this kind of all over, right? The PSC, IWM, small cap financials, versus um, Russell 2000. It just seems like the right place and the right time uh, for small caps to catch that bid. And as a stock market bull, we've been waiting for this. And I think it's, you know, it's unraveling before our eyes and it began Friday. I'm in, let's go. Uh, industrials and small caps, let's go baby. All right, hot takes, what do you got this week? You know, I, I'm sorry to keep harping on the Coinbase stuff, but I, I was a very uh, vocal Coinbase bull. Eating the dead horse. <laughs> no, listen, I was a vocal Coinbase bull earlier this year. I've had a position in the stock for a while, I've traded in and out of it, but I've also had like a longer term core position. I'm out. Uh, for me, it's as simple as I don't want to own a company that the government doesn't want to exist. I'm not trying to fight that battle. That's not for me. There are easier trades on the books. So I'll take a small gain at this point and go home. I want to talk about how uh, sports analysts are, are the treat them the same way as you would sell side analysts, right? <laughs> you know, they know even less, you know, contrarian indicators. I mean, I've been watching them just poo poo on the Miami Heat the entire playoffs, how Milwaukee was such a better team and da 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 da. And, you know, the, the best record in the NBA and Miami spanked them up in five games, moved on to the New York Knicks, blah, blah, blah. They have such a deep bench. This is their year, blah, best year in 50, what, 20 years, whatever. Spanked them up just the same. And then, oh, my God, the Celtics, so much better talent, bigger, faster, stronger. Nope. Miami beat them five times in seven games, uh, in, right? Five times they beat them, uh, as you guys recall. And uh, here we are now, still Miami not getting any credit at all. Spolstra putting on just a clinic, coaching clinic, series tied 1-1 versus Denver. Um, and, and, yes, I'm a Miami Heat fan. Yes, all of this makes me very happy. But as an investors in general, let's say you're uh, you're a Cavaliers fan and you don't have a horse in the race. Just observe the behavior of the animal spirits in throughout the NBA playoffs and think about the sell side community in the same way. Right. Very, very similar. So uh, I think that's a good, a good lesson. No, you could just tell how well coached they are because they're hard to put out like they're so disciplined. They're so resilient. They just hang around. Yeah. Uh, and that's a scary thing, you know, so the series down 10 points, 12 points going to the fourth quarter. Ain't no thing. They don't go away. They don't yeah. go away. And what that yeah. does is it gives them the ability to get hot and go on a run uh, and make a play. Uh, and that's what we saw. What just Sunday night. So that was great and, and, and give the other team the uh, opportunities to make mistakes as well. Yeah. It was a great game. It was a really good game. Uh, I'm excited. And, and this is fun. You know, NBA, you know, basketball is just crushing. You want to talk about uptrends, you know, basketball globally is out of control. The United States basketball is diminishing on a relative basis for, for years and years now. And it's really turning into this global thing where, you know, the United States basketball players will be the minority soon. Uh, they kind of hit on that in that movie. You, you got to watch it and let me know what you think. That I will. With Apple. What's the name of the movie again? Air. Air. It's the Jordan Nike story. Got it. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you again for watching. Make sure to give us a like and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an update and follow me at All Star Charts on Twitter. Be sure to follow Steve at 
S. Straza. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. And we will see you next week.